I just don't think that you would be able to say that they belong in that era. I think the prince turned him over actually. What if I lose to this That's what he must have been thinking. Yeah. And then he went in there and lost. Welcome to Talk Boxing, the Q&A with myself, Spencer Oliver, and him, Mr. Cole Frotch. Cole, how are you doing, mate? I'm good, thank you. Listen, guys, don't forget to like the videos, subscribe to the channel. More importantly, leave your messages in the boxes below. But Cole, let's get on with the show, the Q&A, the funny part. So the first question is from Mike H. First up, um, were the heavyweights like Anthony Joshua and Dillian White, where would they sit in the 90s and the 2000 era? So where would Anthony Joshua... Dillian White sit in the 90s with the likes of Lennox Lewis, maybe with the Tysons, you know, with Razor I think, Ruddox. I think they'd struggle based on yeah. the performances and how, they, how they've been against. They, they've lost fights to people. I mean, the, it's not so much the loss, it's how they've lost. Mm. And when you see who AJ lost to in, in, in Andy Ruiz and the two, the back-to-back -back defeats with with Alexander Usyk, I just mm. think the way in which he lost that, would you put him even in there with a with a with an Evander Holyfield? Certainly not a Mike Tyson would, would or you, Lennox would you, Lewis. Would you put him in there with like a Tommy Morrison or a Ray Mercer? Yeah, I mean when you look at those fighters, Tommy Rob, I mean Ray Mercer. I'd, I'm he's not, a tough fighter, I'm not Ray so Mercer. Sure. No, because he's he's like a brutal. I mean, he pushed Lennox warrior. for a split decision. Of course he did, top fighter. Yeah, so I don't I mean, know. It's a tough era that. I think out of the, all the heavyweight, without just digging out AJ or or, or digging out Anthony. Um, Dylan White, because White got knocked out. I mean, he, he put in a no-show mm. performance against, against Fury. Yeah. And then he got chinned with that uppercut. Mm. He lost to Povetkin, all right, he won the rematch. I mean, not taking anything away from, from that performance, but Povetkin looked terrible in that rematch. Do he you think the difference between the heavyweights in the 90s, even going earlier, 80s, 70s, but this was topically about the 90s, but the heavyweights in the 90s, the durability and the will to win seems to be different to the guys in the modern era. Why is that? I feel like is the that work, down to money? I feel like the is work rate as well. And the, yeah. and, and the ability to take punches at that weight. And they're mm. not in against people who can't punch. They're in against big hitters. And obviously when Mike Tyson hit him on the chin, they all fell over, didn't they? Yeah. Um, but I just don't think that, that White and Fury, sorry, White and AJ belong in that era of the 80s and 90s. Mm. You, I, don't, I, won't, I won't go... I won't go Lennox it's a Lewis, tough era, isn't Lennox it? Lewis, Mike Tyson, oh. Evander Holyfield, even like a bit further, Riddick yeah, Bowe. Riddick Bowe, they were all 90s. Yeah, yeah. You, want, you want to stick him in with them, but he was a bit older, wasn't he? Yeah. I, I, I just don't think that you would be able to say that they belong in that era just based on the losses and the performances they've had. They've certainly been in there and they've certainly been letting shots go, but they'd be getting flattened, mate. Yeah, all right, well, let's look, move on. Darth Vapor. Darth Vapor, do you like that yeah, one? He's on the vape, isn't he? <laughs> He's on the vape Who would win between a prime Prince Nazim Hamid and a prime Noye Inoue? Mm. Now, Noye Inoue has now gone yeah. up. He's become a four-weight world champion up at Super Bantam now. Naz was at Feather. So it's a difficult one to call that because can Inoue carry yeah. the weight and the power up? He won his first world title at Light Flyweight. Do you know that, Inoue? Really? He's now just become Super Bantamweight world champion against Fulton. It's one of them, isn't it? When you go prime versus prime, you can't eras, really, yeah. there's eras, but you, you, know, you can't factor in that bomb that Nassim Hamad used to land. And the unusual angles. That massive uppercut mm. and that, that power that he carried in both hands, explosive power. Mm. So, yes, Naz could have got outboxed, but yes, he could have absolutely I think stretched him. I'm going with the Prince. Mm. I think the Prince turned him over, yeah. actually, because I think Inoue is one of those pressure fighters that comes forward, throws loads of punches, yeah. very heavy-handed. But he does come forward in yeah. straight lines and whatnot. And I just think yeah. the Prince would have found the angles, like yeah. you say, those uppercuts. And we're talking boom. prime as well. Yeah, prime. And Going prime back like Steve Robinson, Tom Boom Boom Johnson. The prime does want just a massive Vasquez. puncher. It was really skillful and it yeah. was quick as well. It's got yeah. speed with that jab. And then yeah. you land that uppercut from awkward angles with power. Such a nightmare to fight. So we're both agreeing. Yeah, Nazim nice. Ahmed. All right, let's move on. Who have we got next? We've got Ryan Milton. Ryan Milton says, how important is the mental side... Um, which is the mental side of a press conference in title fights. So how important is it? I suppose what he's trying to ask is, you know, when the press conference goes on, the psychological battle yeah. begins. Plays, how important is that? It plays a factor. I don't think it's massively important, but it depends on your personality. Can the fight be won and lost at the press conference? If you're affected by stuff like that, if, if, if mentally you're a, bit, you're a bit naive and you, you're quite new to the game and you've not been in them situations before, mm. it's all known, you just think, oh, he was so confident. Like Tyson Fury... 
runs rings around a lot mm. of his opponents at press conferences and yeah. he destroys the brain and scrambles he did it to Klitschko when he ran in in the yeah. Batman outfit and knocked all his belts all over the floor and started Start yes. doing a theatrical <laughs> performance. <laughs> Only time he had a roll around, didn't it? Yeah, he Took did. the belts with him, and yeah. I think I think um, I think Klitschko was thinking, "Oh shit! What if I lose to this guy? Mm. What if I lose to this? Mm. That's what he must have been thinking." Yeah. And then he went in there and lost because his head was he, gone. He got inside so that, his head. So yeah, but that's because Klitschko is like an upstanding citizen yeah. who's, yeah. who does the right thing and talks well and tries to be um, tries to. He's just a nice guy, isn't it? And then yeah. you've got Fury getting inside his head and scrambling his brain. So that in that instance, it's a massive advantage and it's a massive mm-hmm. head. But if someone like me did that, I'd be like, look at this idiot. What's he up to? Do you, do you think that actually fights can be won and lost more on the ring walk just to sort of... It, well, there's a saying to, that I love, come of the hour, come of the man. Yeah, just, and in to, that last just to, to expand on this question, do you think the fight can be won, won and lost more on a ring walk as opposed to a press conference, because that's when yeah, you see your then, because the ring walk is the time, Cole, isn't it? When you're going that's in there, you all think, the questions are asked. It's, yeah. You ask yourself the questions. Did I do the yeah. spine? Did I do the running? Yeah. How good am I? Do I belong here? Did I leave well, that stone unturned? We're going to find out. And that's why I never left the stone unturned, unless I had no choice, like mm-hmm. the volcanic ash cloud. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter how good you are. In a little, in a little, little helicopter perform. just flying across. Yeah. A little plane, wasn't it? Yeah, a plane. Yeah. Come on, get it right. It was an air, it was an aeroplane. I went in an helicopter. Yeah, once. was did it have the little propeller? I've been in a helicopter front. once, no, twice. I would never go in another one. Really, I've yeah. never done that. I don't that. like them. It's like yeah. a big propeller spinning around in the air. It's like all wrong. I see my life's too valuable for that. It's all like the sky. I don't, know. I don't I don't trust them helicopters. Yeah. I just feel like you've got a chance in a plane. You probably haven't. So I think it's a 0.5 percent survival rate in a plane. But you, you've ten, got more than a helicopter. Ten thousand aeroplanes take off and land safely every day. Okay. Yeah, helicopters come down. For me, I also put the television on, the helicopter fell out of the sky, and you think to yourself, I'm not, I don't know how much money you get, I ain't going up in that <laughs> helicopter, I'll walk. I, I flew to uh, Monaco, yeah. and you have to go from the airport straight into Monaco on a helicopter. I was like, I'm all right, I'll get the cab. And, and they're like, no, 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 it's a lot quicker, we're, we're a bit rushed. I'm like, no, I'm sweet. Yeah. I'm just feeling a bit funny, I don't fancy the helicopter. There's like, no, 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 you've got to get an helicopter because that's the connection. I'm like, I'm taking the fucking cab, all right. I ain't going in that helicopter. <laughs> and, then, and then I realised I won't go in an helicopter and I took the cab and it took two hours. Really? Just sat in traffic. I thought you could say it's terrible then, but anyway, is that another cold frotch fascinating fact? Because you've got some, haven't you? You've got oh, some great I've facts. I've got some amazing I mean, we, facts. We use them, you know, in, in other shows. Let's move on, let's move on. Right, Lucky Lewis. Lucky Lewis says, Hi, how highly valued is an Olympic gold me- medal in comparison to a world title? Good question, but I, I think a world title means a lot more than an Olympic gold medal. Yeah. You? Well, an Olympic gold medal will give you that... Um, Gives you the respect. That catapult to stardom yeah, but I mean, I, before but, you turn but pro. I mean, once it's all over, even when... But say if your boxing's over yeah. completely, do you get more... Respected for being an Olympic gold medalist or a world champion? You get more digits in the bank account for being a world champion. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. But an Olympic gold medal will give you a catapult, a launch you, the catalyst to success. If you look at I, well, Audley Harrison, and I was backed by the BBC following mm. on his, his Olympic gold medal. Look mm. at Amir Khan and the career he had early on because he was on everybody's Olympic television silver, screen, yeah, on so lineal television. Old, yeah. so he was on our TV early on because of that Olympic gold. Um, I know James DeGale won Olympic gold. He was talked about, yeah. but no way near as much. And, and Luke Campbell as well, because mm. he, he won the Olympic gold at the same yeah. time as Anthony Joshua, but he got kind of left behind, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. So the Olympic gold's not really, I mean, it's a great Olympics achievement. Olympics gold is great good, Great achievement, but a world title, you get paid and you're world champion. So yeah. yeah, the world title's the one. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, let's move on. And the final question is from Fishing Paul. <laughs> Stop me. See you, mate. It says, influence of boxing. If influence of boxing continues to grow, Will we see more professionals prefer to take that route as opposed, proposed, um, as as opposed, opposed to, to taking yeah. proper fights and yeah. real boxing? Yeah. Potentially, because if the money continues to get out of hand and is disproportionately yeah. um, distributed over, over weight divisions and over, over fights that are, are bigger names, like, for example, Floyd Mayweather mm. fighting, fighting Conor McGregor yeah. for hundreds of millions. And, um, I think influence of boxing will disappear over time, though. Yeah, because I people, will get, I, I, people I, I, get sick of it. Yeah, but I mean... And the fights at, are never that good. If you look at this Misfits boxing that goes on now, did you see that girl that just won the other day? She got kicked out. She she won the fight. And it was not particularly good anyway. And then she just whipped her top up and she was running around in the crowd. They had to... I took her out. The, yeah, took her out of the tournament. And all I that. didn't just go like. I didn't see that one. No. There's I've a saw certain that. bit of decorum that that is needed with that. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like there's they go. There's a fine line with pulling each other's hair and this and that. And I think that eventually, that's it's not it's not a good ad, advert. It doesn't show. 
it's not showing kids the right way or whatever. No. And I just think eventually that will that will die out. What's your thoughts? Yeah, hopefully it will die out eventually. Um, so, so the answer is no. I don't think that it will. Real boxers won't choose the route of no, influencer boxing. No, I think it's got a real s- boxer wants to follow his dream, right? Yeah, it's got a bit of interest in it, and if it's if it's, I've mega- sort of helped you out a little bit there, Listen, right? Oh, yeah. He's all over the place a little bit there. You've, you've asked me a question and give your answer in it and then not really bother with listening no, to yeah, my opinion. you went down the wrong road so, so I just really, pull you back. It's really poor journalism from you, <laughs> but we'll, we'll cut this out so you don't look so bad. No, leave but, it. Um, <laughs> but um, I just think it's a different audience, a mm. uh, different demographic audience as well because you've got different age groups watching this and people who haven't really got a clue about the sport yeah. watch this Misfits and watch these crossover fights. But real boxing fans who understand and appreciate and respect the sport of boxing, I don't think would get involved in, in this misfit stuff. And when you say, would you fight again to me? Of course I'd fight one of these misfits or one of these YouTubers or crossover fight because I don't think it would be a fight. I keep saying it. It's not a proper boxing match. Yeah, but, oh, no, but I've got a problem with that because I know what the Cobra's like, right? And I know what will happen once... <laughs> <laughs> you are like a cobra once it goes up and if you rattle it yeah. it's going to go yeah. right so I know you go in there with all intentions you think I'm going to be up for murder you in, aren't you in, in, all someone's, intentions. Getting, someone's getting their like, head co- <laughs> <laughs> cobra's gone in there you'll go nice and easy. and what'll happen is they'll, they'll, they'll throw a jab on your new bonce yeah. <laughs> on your, I won't say your new beat because your missus will get the amp. yeah, yeah. alright so, chug ears <laughs> <laughs> I've already had a bollocking for that. So you can get a jab on your new nose. Yeah. yeah and I'm going to throw um, a big dirty up canvas <laughs> scraping uppercut. It's going to come from the floor and put someone into orbit. Yeah, yeah I it. would do because yeah, I wouldn't I'll... go to help myself. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, listen, Cole, <laughs> again, another brilliant episode. Yeah, man. Thanks you guys for watching this week's Q&A with myself and Cole Frotch. And remember to like the videos, subscribe to the channel and keep leaving those messages in the boxes below. Until next week, we'll see you then.